So I've been looking for an affordable 100% cotton sketchbook for ages and I saw Cludvig got a Paul Rubens one in her Instagram stories. So I went to check it out to see what the price was and it was affordable and I can't say no to anything pink either. I loved the pebble grain texture, um, the pocket in the back, the perforated pages and the strap to keep it shut. But unfortunately my first impressions were not good once I opened it. The black lining was stuck to the paper, which stopped the page from lying flat. And on the first couple of pages, there's a sort of crease, like something's been pressed down on the paper, um, which is just really annoying. And the dye from the black lining had also transferred to the first sheet. So all in all, not good really. But having said that, I've been painting a lot of flowers lately. I don't know if that says something about me wanting some hope in the world at the moment um, with everything that's going on, some peace and some light and some just prettiness. Um, but yeah, so I thought I'd show you a little tutorial on the first page of how I paint roses. Most people find them really complicated, but I have a couple of techniques to help you build colour and values in the right places. First though, a little tip. I found a flower on Pinterest that I wanted to paint and sometimes the palette can be really complicated and I don't want to end up with muddy colours so I want to make sure that my colours stay nice and bright um, and as pretty as the original image. So I take a screenshot, I load it up to my Instagram story and then I use the eyedropper tool to select and swatch the five most dominant colours. This gives me a good colour map or palette it just helps keep me on the straight and narrow while I'm mixing my colours. Anyway, back to painting the flower. You need to start with a well-drawn sketch. By that, I don't mean that you need to have high skill, just a sketch that you'll still understand while you're painting. I'm removing most of the graphite to leave a faint trace of it so that the values create shape, depth, lighting and shadows, not the line work. Make sure you have all the details worked out before moving on though, because if you try and paint and you haven't got all of the sort of technical shapes down, you're gonna miss that information and it's much harder to make it up while you're painting rather than having it down in the sketch in the first place. So just take your time and if a large fully bloomed flower intimidates you, start out with a smaller, less open reference. The same techniques in this tutorial will apply. I'm starting out by mixing my lightest shade of the dominant hue, a rosy kind of peach colour. So I'm mixing quite a cool red with a cool yellow. And then I paint large details from the inside of each petal, making sure I leave the tips of the petals white. This is so that they pop as we build the values. It also lays the foundation or map for painting the rest of the flower too. Next, I apply some green to the bases of the most open petals. And using the dragging technique, I draw the paint out to a fine gradient. I do this by putting the green where I want it, and while it's still wet, I brush the edges with clear water so that the green will spread to nothing. Here's where the form really starts to take shape. I mix the same two colours for the pink to a darker shade and start adding layers in the same way I did before. This just raises the contrast and creates the illusion of depth. Now that the centre of the rose looks about right, it's time to make the edges of the petal stand out. So I'm mixing some Payne's Grey to a very diluted concentration, just enough to create some shadows. Some of these areas aren't dark enough for me though, so I'm increasing the values to make the petals stand out even more and improve the illusion of sunlight falling on this flower. Thank you. 
and we're nearly done. Sometimes people outline their flowers, which is fine stylistically, but I want to keep the mood of this piece soft. So I'm going to paint a wash around the flower in order to highlight the edges rather than with line work. For a really even wash, tilt your paper by 30 to 45 degrees so that gravity pulls the watercolour down slowly. You want to make sure that each stroke is quite wet so that the paint beads at the bottom edge of each stroke. This stops the wash from ending up streaky. And finally, a little bit about the sketchbook. After the initial disappointments, this book did nothing but impress me in terms of its performance with paint. The paper is the perfect absorbency as it doesn't dry too fast, which allows me to blend easily. But equally, I don't have to wait ages for the layers to set in. The cold press texture was lovely to paint on and the colours remained bright. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to have a go at painting a rose in this way yourself, make sure you tag me on Instagram so that I can share your work in my stories.